In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as Lent continues, let us persevere in Christ's calling to repent and convert to him fully. Let us acknowledge our sins and be sorry for them. The Confidior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I had done and what I had failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while the 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Raise us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens of Christ Jesus, that in the age to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Jesus said to the Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things and hates the light and does not come to the, towards the light, so that is that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen and done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today marks the midpoint in Lent. Uh, this Sunday is traditionally known as Latare Sunday, which means rejoice, because the penance and, and somberness of, of Lent are half over, and because it, the feast of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is closer. Today's readings give us good reasons for rejoin, rejoicing. One of the teachings in today's gospel is about the great love that God has for us and our response to that love. How great is God's love? John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, 
so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. That's how great God's love is for us. And how do we respond to that love? Well, we have two choices. We can either accept this great love of God by believing in Jesus and following in his footsteps and therefore being able to walk in the light, or we can choose not to believe in Jesus, living a sinful life, and therefore preferring darkness so that the dark side within us won't be exposed. Today's gospel begins with a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus that needs some explaining. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Now, what is this about Jesus being lifted up? As Moses uh, lifted up a serpent. And who is this guy Nicodemus? Well, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a leader of the Jews. But he saw something special in Jesus. So he came to Jesus to learn something more about him. However, he came at night because he didn't want other Jews to see him with Jesus. Uh, no self-respecting Pharisee would be caught dead reaching out to Jesus. And in John's Gospels, Nicodemus appears one more time, and that's when he helps Joseph of Arimathea to bury Jesus. So apparently, he did believe in Jesus, and like the Gospel suggests, he must have been granted eternal life. In his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus makes reference to a strange Old Testament event that is told in the book of Numbers, chapter 21. And the story goes like this. After Moses rescued the people of Israel from their slavery in, in Egypt, they remained, remained in the wilderness for many years and were complaining and actually regretting that they had ever left Egypt. To punish them for their ingratitude, God sent a plague of deadly serpents which were biting them. And very quickly, they changed their minds and asked for mercy. God, in his infinite love, told Moses to make a serpent out of bronze and lift it up on a pole so whoever looked at it would be, <clears throat> would be healed from the snake bites. So John, the author of this gospel, takes that story and uses it as a kind of parable of Jesus. Basically, he's explaining that when the bronze serpent was lifted up, the people looked at it and their thoughts turned to God. And by the power of God, they were healed from the snake bites. John is also explaining that in a similar way, Jesus must be lifted up. And when people turn their eyes and, and thoughts to, towards him, in other words, believe in him, they too may be healed, but spiritually and will find eternal life. Now, it is important to note that John relates the term lifted up to two key events in Jesus' life, lifted up on the cross and lifted up in his resurrection. That's how we might have eternal life. And there's a reason for, to be learned for all, all of us here. For Jesus, the cross was the way to his glory. If Jesus refused it, as he could easily have done, there would have been no glory for him. It is the same thing with us. If we choose the easy way, which we can, then we lose the glory. To be a Christian means to really believe in Jesus and follow in his footsteps. That is, by making the cross the way to our glory. A Christian is expected to be God-centered and people-centered. Instead of looking for darkness, a Christian is asked to look for light through faith in Jesus. Instead of seeking revenge, a Christian is asked to forgive. These are the kinds of teachings that Jesus gave us. And the only way why why we live our lives according to this teaching is because we believe in him, 
This is how we are led to eternal life. And this is not me just talking. It is written all over today's gospel. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Again, God gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. And whoever, whoever believes in him will not be condemned. The greatest proof of God's great love for us was that he gave his only son for our salvation. But scripture tells us in many ways, in, in many other places, when God showed his love and care for us. And just look at the first reading. Here we see the people of Israel practicing abominations against God. And God, in his great compassion and love, kept sending messengers and prophets to change their ways. But they didn't listen. So God has, had no recourse but to punish them by sending enemies to destroy and enslave them. But later on, he forgives them by freeing them from their captors when the Persians came to power. And, all, and throughout the Old Testament, we see the people of Israel pulling away from God and repenting and God forgiving them time after time. But you know, history repeats itself with us too. How many times have we offended God? We are so lucky that his love is so patient. Does this mean that we can go on sin sinning? Hopefully not. Remember that it was God who took the initiative to love us first. It is us, up to us to accept or reject that love. He does not condemn us, we condemn ourselves. Do we prefer darkness to light? We pray not. In just three weeks, we will be celebrating the Paschal mystery that is the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, for Jesus, the cross was the way to his glory. <clears throat> Let us follow in his footstep and may our own crosses be the way to our glory in Jesus Christ. Let us profess the faith of the Church in the God who gave his life and was raised up to save us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third, again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us ask God for those things we truly need in this life. The response will be, Lord, save your people. 
May this Lenten season be made holy by our fasting, our prayer, and by works of charity, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. May our Lenten resolutions prepare us to seek God's forgiveness for our sins and human failings, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your, your people. people. May the approaching feast of the Lord's rising from death cause us to rejoice with hope even when we face hardships in life, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. people. May God, who is rich in mercy, turn the hearts of all believers to live the Christian life in its fullness and beauty, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. For the continued support and generosity of our faithful that promotes and sustains our parish, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. For a merciful judgment before the throne of God and for the salvation and happiness of those who have already passed from us, especially for Joseph Oliver, we pray, Lord, Lord save, save your people. That God will watch over with his healing power those recently hospitalized and those suffering or recovering any form of illness or setback who seek the assistance of our prayers, especially for Cindy Fisher, Jen Dominics, Billy Markovitz, Catherine Hauser, Judith Ellis, for John Bell, Jeannie Petrini, Emma Kimetz, Elias Hall, Carson Ayers, and also for Ray Seward, who will celebrate his 90th birthday tomorrow, and for the recovery, healing, and comfort to all the sick, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. people. Father, your Son was raised up for our salvation, for you're the God who saves and does not condemn. On this Lenten day, as we rejoice in the promise of salvation, continue to spur on your faithful gathered here and those who participate from afar in the works of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> we place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. <laughs> 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You, therefore, most almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For one about to give his life to set us free. <clears throat> As he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you th thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save our Savior of the world.
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Barry Nestout, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people, just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue, and for those who have died in your friendship, especially, especially Joseph Oliver, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive the sins of those who offend us, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, <laughs> Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy you should enter to my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. The body of Christ. Amen. Jerusalem is built as a city, bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord. body of Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you this night, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.